Hello, fellow geeks. This week on Geeks of Azeroth, there was a new patch. Also, a new patch happened. And yes, we're going to talk about that patch a little bit and a little bit more this week on Geeks of Azeroth. Welcome to the show. My name's Tarly, and you guys know these other guys' names by now, uh, but I'll introduce them anyway. We got Britsa and Zul. How's everybody doing? Kind of a big week this week. Yeah, is it? Good. <laughs> I, 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 think, what? I think uh, Zul mentioned it in the intro. I think there was a patch. I might have forgotten oh. that. Oh, yeah, we forgot to mention that. So there was a <laughs> patch this week. <laughs> it's just a small thing, wasn't it? Nothing major got added to the no, game. I mean, it was kind of... Yeah, I just... You know, everything okay, changed <laughs> <laughs> uh well so that is the big news of the week patch 6.0.2 has landed and let's talk about it um starting off i mean what have we all been doing uh to start off the patch what was the first thing you guys did when you hopped on uh, we'll start with you britza i will be bluntly honest this a lot of people have joked that WoW is going to have a slightly Sims approach from now on, and I took that to the max. I have spent this week doing nothing more than jumping into characters that I have played and that I haven't played for quite a while, and just seeing what's on there. Um, little bits of heirloom gear that I didn't know they have, uh, and just getting, you know, like when you, you get ready for something new, whether you're moving house or you start a new job, you just feel like you have to start organizing things. You do nothing productive, but you just organize stuff. That has been my week, just logging in and not a loss of playing through. I, I think I get a bit nervous when things start off. You know, like when an expansion starts and you, do you ever feel like you don't want to go to where everyone is because that's where everyone is? Yeah. <laughs> you just want to be really antisocial and you just think, nah, they're all playing that. I want to be different. That's how I felt. So it's been really boring. I won't say anything on it because it's incredibly boring, but it's just been sort of settling the characters that I've got and, and seeing also if there's anything I'd like to do once the expansion hits, like a what booster character I want to take. So really, I'm just trying to get in the mindset before I jump into what content there is or isn't, I guess. Mm -hmm. How about you, Zool? Um, spent a lot of time messing with my UI. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was I was using um, Elv UI, so, you know, a complete total replacement from top to bottom. Mm. And I've been kind of, kind of wanting to step away from that for a while. And I was like, well, now's a good time because <laughs> everything's going to break. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, I uninstalled that and I uninstalled... Eh, a good number of the add-ons I used, just kept a few of them, and um, went in and you know set up my bars and all that, and went through my spell book and because you know a lot changed. Um, and at first I did that with my balance spec on my main, mm -hmm. and then I did the same thing with my feral spec, reset up my bars and everything, and I've slowly been going in and adding in some uh, other add-ons as I realize you know what I do want to change this up i don't want to use this default thing but just not quite as much as i previously had going on um but then besides that the first thing i did was i went to the uh blasted lands and yeah. went through the quests there <laughs> well the first thing i happened to do was i think uh, tom's going to like this i have betrayed the horde yes <laughs> yes I have moved my main tunes, uh, being Hunter, Monk, and Death Knight, over to the Alliance, and it feels great. I, lo I love all the, the, the humans and the Night Elves are my two favorites, uh, as far as the uh, new racial mo or you know character models go. So I'm really enjoying that. I love Stormwind. Always have loved Stormwind. Um, but yeah, basically checked out the Blasted Lands myself first of all, and. Played all my classes to feel it was different, but we'll get there because I have some things to complain about later on in the show. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, very quick. Oh yeah. Very quickly, as a as a blood elf player, do you find it a bit underwhelming, sort of logging in and 
not seeing anything different. That was honestly what made me want to change right away. My Death Knight just mm. looked so ugly compared to everything else that was happening. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did enjoy hopping on the uh, Horde Chopper. Like, that. that is a really cool Oh, mount. yeah. Yes. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed that, too. Oh, wait. No, I didn't. <laughs> ha! Keep in mind, <laughs> I, I did keep, like, my other Toons Horde just moved a couple to the Alliance because I went to experience both sides of the story this time around. Uh, but, yeah. Um... Yeah, the Blood Elves are ugly, <laughs> just compared yeah, to everything of, else now. <laughs> one of the other first things I did was I went and knelt before the new war chief, Vol'jin, <laughs> in the throne room. <laughs> yes, it, it is nice to finally not have Korkron guards running all over the place, beating people up in Ogrimmar. <laughs> yeah, I'm no longer feeling oppressed. I'm like, didn't we kill him like a year ago? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now, there's been some things surprising people. I believe Tom can explain these little surprises yes um basically there a couple of people from joystick or wow insider to be more specific have sort of shared some of the things that they weren't quite expecting from the new patch a lot of people had high expectations we were expecting lots of content lots of new changes to the systems um uh, heirlooms for example we're going to potentially be handled differently and just to pick out a few of them um let's start with doo -doo -doo -doo, alex zivar um he said i have an obsession with the timeless isle lately i wandered back into it a while ago and found i didn't want to leave killed lots of stuff and get fabulous prizes in exchange sure let's go for that even if those prizes won't mean much a month from now it's fun my surprise, though, is how little there is to the Iron Horde invasion in the Blasted Lands. It doesn't feel like an invasion. It doesn't feel like anything. The Orcs don't seem particularly dangerous, nor did they advance very far before we squashed them. The Iron Horde might seem like a bigger threat if they didn't show up at all. <laughs> uh, so I guess we can talk about that in a second. Um, Dawn Moore was surprised that the Heirloom tab hadn't been rolled out with this patch. Apparently there was announcement to do with that previously that it wouldn't be rolled out quite yet mm -hmm. um but elizabeth harper was surprised that the epic cloak quest hasn't gone this patch um oh it hasn't i think no it's still around apparently which is i think contrary <laughs> if to something you already we said, started it no it's, it if, may... you, if you already started it you can still finish it up until the launch of the expansion but if you haven't started it that's too bad right that might make sense considering um she said about the fact she'll be in Throne of Thunder working on Raffian Rep this weekend, so she must have started it, and that's why. That's how I understood it. She obviously so did you... not read patch notes. <laughs> Come on. No. <laughs> you didn't study, didn't study for the test. But, I mean, just to take the, the content, I mean, Zul, you said about the Iron Horde Invasion quest line. Has that been, you know, enjoyable? Uh, it barely took any time, and I was done. Right. So, uh, yeah, we can I, I was jump expecting right into it to be a bit bigger, too. So less the Iron Horde invasion and more the Iron Horde stroll. More the, oh, here's some stuff. Okay, done. Oh. Yeah. I mean, kind yeah. of jumping right into that topic there. I mean, I myself, when I went and played it, it, it felt so repetitive. Just you go to this section, kill some of these, kill, collect that. Now go mm. over here, kill some of these, collect that. Now go over here, kill some of these, collect that. You're done. Yeah, there, like... it was, there wasn't any big like final <laughs> thing. Yeah. It, Apparently, it lacks a lot of emotion mm -hmm. as well. I mean, we'll talk about this in a, a later segment, but apparently there's there's a lot of particularly crossover. Apparently, Murad and Thrall have almost the exactly same scripts. Apparently. And considering the context of what they're experiencing and considering what we saw in Lords of War with Murad, you would expect you know him just to pick up a mace and go, blah, 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 and just run straight in. <laughs> but um, <laughs> What was that? What does he do when he picks he up goes, the mace? Blah, 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 blah. Is he going part Murloc now? <laughs> well, probably something like that. Uh, but you, you expect some, you know, real sort of uh, anger and that savageness, you know, that, mm -hmm. that real sorts of sense of savagery. And I think the way it's been portrayed, I never touched it myself, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems it's very much like you say, kill this guy, a bunch of these guys, kill a bunch of these guys. Um, Rad gives you a pat on the back and you go see Varian Rin. And uh, <laughs> job done, effectively. Yeah, like I th yeah, I didn't know they had almost the effectively the same script, but yeah, yeah he should be just gung ho about let's go in and take these guys apart, and Thrall should be more like, oh, this is 
this is not good. These these are, you know, the people I remember growing up with, some of them. You know, part like, part of me is really this, hoping, because uh, I've heard so many good things about questing in Draenor, so let's hope that this is not a prelude to how it's going to be questing in Draenor. Because uh, I didn't find it that entertaining. It, just, it was kind of over with. And then, of course, you know, the day after I finish it and never want to do it again, they add gear to the quest yeah. rewards. <laughs> <laughs> the gear wasn't properly implemented um, in the rewards. Yeah, so they had to repatch that. But if you've already done it, right now anyway, you can't go back and do it again on the same tune. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify what I said earlier, horde hunting on the... <laughs> I've got to be careful how I say that as well. <laughs> Joystick, on the Wow Insider article that was talking about... Um, this whole quest line and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, I thought the story for this pre-patch was pretty horrible. Where was the feeling from Mirad? Shouldn't have been surprised when he found out there were all, uh, where the orcs were coming from. Um, there was just no feeling of any sort of emotion from Mirad. Kill orcs, save the Alliance soldiers, report to Rin. If this is the kind of storytelling they plan on telling in WAD, then I may just have to find a new game to play. Uh, I enjoy it well to its fullest, but going from the awesome story that became Mop to this dry stuff they uploaded today, pretty shameful, if you ask me. Here's hoping there's a better, um, there's a st the story is better on Draenor. Um, and then um, Rebecca Jones, just a few posts below, so you, you think that's bad, you should try the horse side. Thrall is like, dude, there are your people, kind of, Grom is alive, and you just call them savages. So, <laughs> that's that. Yeah. That's just one side of the opinion, though. Obviously, you know, this. I think some people are enjoying it, maybe, for what it is. But at the end of the day, it's a pre-patch story. I mean, I mean, aside from this, you know, I think the entire patch is cool. I just think this mm -hmm. this quest line should have been more than what it is. I mean, and a lot of people are trying to compare it to... They will always compare pre-patches to Wrath's pre-patch event. And I don't think oh. anything will ever top that. But... Um, yeah, I mean, it. Yeah, in my opinion, it is pretty dull, the quest line. I mean, yeah. what did you think, Tom? I mean, did you enjoy it at all? Well, I, I haven't touched it. Oh, um, yeah, but, right. I, but from seeing what I've seen, I, I think it's, I don't know how different it is from the beta. I mean, the, I guess generally talking about the patch, there have been some departures from the beta, some really surprising me, particularly with the, the quest line. Mm -hmm. Some things got, um, some gear got thrown in at the end of it as well so you can get like a cloak a ring and some other bits and pieces but um yeah i i don't really know to be honest it's the thing you expect from a pre-patch is not necessarily to set up the story but to at least give you a good sense of the flavor mm. and i think the problem is is blizzard has done a really good job of providing a sense of that flavor but the yeah. delivery of it has been incredibly bland mm. and that's the problem is you know when you've got this repetitive kill 10 of these collect 10 of these go kill three of these now you kind of think this is the same thing we've had yeah. like what it what makes it stand out you're just effectively delivering the same story in a bland way and you're expecting it to taste different and that's that's the problem i guess if for an entire rebuild of the game people expect something a bit more dynamic but you know saying that blizzard's got a good excuse saying well, look what else has changed yeah, yeah. I mean, like none of the fights were all that challenging mm -hmm. Um, I was hoping for some like big, challenging elites to be wandering around that you'd like need a group for. Yeah. But really, the only thing that was challenging that I found anyway was ta tagging your mob to kill for the quest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, with my with my feral druid, if I now that one of the things I really like, one of the changes now that my um, combo points are on my druid and not on the mob itself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd kill a mob with full points, and I'd go use a uh, five-point ferocious bite and one-shot the next mob. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, okay, with the one hit. I mean, taking in the like stat squish and everything. You know, it, if you have gear right now, it, everything is very easy. <laughs> mm. So you have to take that into consideration as well. Um, I'm not super well geared. I mean, I'm yeah. okay geared, but. So we can segue that right into class changes, unless we want to keep talking about the uh, quest line anymore. Go for it. All right, right into class changes. Um, everything feels different for the most part that I have found, at least on all the classes <laughs> I play. Um, most part for the better. Um, 
But uh, I'll, personally, I found that the Windwalker Monk is no longer enjoyable at all. <laughs> um, they have really slowed down its rotation, and to me, that's what uh, made the uh, Windwalker really fun, was how fast you're switching between stuff you were doing, but they've really slowed it down, and, and in PvP, it is just awful. That was my PvP spec of choice. Ugh. Ugh. It's awful. I know. I know. Coltrane <laughs> from CTR had a big, uh, big thing about it. He mm -hmm. said he absolutely destroyed. Well, not destroyed. I guess it's a bit strong, but <laughs> yeah, and it disrupted the sense of play. And I think that's something that's affected a lot of classes. Is that yeah. that tone of play and that pace of play mm -hmm. that people have got very used to, and yeah. it's changed. And that has changed for a lot of classes. And a lot, in a lot of ways, it's better. Like for uh, Mistweaver, I. I was not liking that towards the end of this expansion, but now with this patch, man, it, it feels like a really solid healing class. I mean, we can talk about healing in general a little bit later, but yeah, Miss Weaver feels great. Uh, my Death Knight, I'm now using Unholy as my primary PvE spec because it got majorly buffed, and it's really fun. Uh, Hunter, Hunter's the only class I have so far that really hasn't changed. Lost a few buttons, but other than that, it feels pretty much the same. What about you guys? What have you been playing, testing out? Go on, Zul. Alright, um, well, I started with my Druid, and I started with Balance, and Balance had huge changes. <laughs> <laughs> Completely changed how that works. Um, I no, no longer have control at all of my, uh, my Eclipse bar. It just moves on its own. Really? And Because it used to be like when you cast a spell, it would move it. And so, you know, you cast mm -hmm. things to move it, and then it moves back the other direction, and you have to switch which spells mm -hmm. you're, can't, you're casting. Now it just cycles on its own, and um, huh. <laughs> it's kind of a pendulum effect. Like, it slows down at the end, and then speeds back up and slows down at the end. So it sits at the max points a little bit longer than it stays in the middle. Ah. But so you have to be paying attention to that to know which spells to be casting. Because if you keep casting one spell and it switches to the other side, you can still keep casting it, but it's going to be weaker. It doesn't. It doesn't get a bonus. <laughs> so like, it's totally different. And balance is already a very different spec than like anything else there is, anyways. Yeah. And um, but so I switched over to feral, and I'm really liking feral because they simplified it. Because it was really complicated with having, <laughs> you know snapshotting your dots and oh, i have yeah. a buff i need to reapply this dot so it has the buff mm -hmm. and now um dots dynamically change w with what buffs you do or don't have oh well, if you get cool. one your dot does more damage while it's active and so it's automatic you just have to um you know put it back up when it gets low and all dots for every class now work like affliction warlocks used to where if you did it in the last like 30 percent duration mm. You're not losing anything. It tacks that on to the new max length. So you don't have to be like, oh, if I cast it when there's seven seconds left, then I'm actually wasting time because I could have fit another spell in that time instead. Hmm. It doesn't. So it's easier to keep the dots going and know that you're getting everything you can from them. And like I mentioned, combo points are now specific to me instead of the mobs. <laughs> So I don't be like, oh, I just killed that mob that had five points on it, and I've got to get five more again on this next one. <laughs> so Feral was simplified in a lot of ways, and I'm having a blast with Feral, but Balance is going to take me a while yeah. to relearn. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Tom? What uh, classes have you tried out? I, again, I feel like I'm kind of the, the dead horse being dragged in the show, because I haven't been into anything to try out. I, honestly, I do... <laughs> Although it sounds a bit insane, I do want to go back into LFR um, with a couple of alts because I feel well. Apparently, LFR is in Siege of Ogrimmar is so easy and simple now that <laughs> literally I I won't need to listen to anyone. I'll just do my own thing and kill the bosses myself. Mm -hmm. That's that's apparently the level of ease. Um, but I I think logging into different characters. For example, my warrior, which I haven't played for a while, he's still stuck at. Um, What's the big dragon shrine in I, in Northrend? I'm trying to remember. I've lost the name of it the last second, but he's been stuck up there for about two years um, <laughs> at level 73, and he was my main for quite a while. So if anything, I was keen to log onto him um, because I think he's the character I'm going to boost. Mm. 
when I buy Warlords. <laughs> so, but and but the thing I've realised, looking into him, logging into a Tor and Druid that I have, I realised that one, I've become incredibly detached from the sense of play. Like you were just talking, Zor, how Feral Druids used to work. I never saw that because I was off those characters for such a long period of time. And looking back on and knowing it's a fresh start for everyone, mm-hmm. and even though nothing makes sense at the moment and guys are just about catching up, I'm really excited. If anything, I'm more keen to play the classes I didn't play than the ones like from my Mage and my Warlock, for example, because I, I don't know. I just feel like there's just something much more exciting in totally learning a new class when everyone's learning it. And I want to try and take advantage of that dull moment rather than leave mm. like three months and then be, clearly be, you know, rubbish at my class and yeah. all that. I mean, because there'll be no excuse. Speaking on warlocks, um, you know, I, I had leveled my warlock up in uh, Pandaria as demonology. You know, the whole way through leveling mm. was demonology. And then I get to 90 and fi- to only find out that that spec is just not viable for anything. Well, now come uh, this patch, uh, Demonology is like the second on all the DPS charts of the ratings behind Fury. Really? Uh, Demonology has been so majorly buffed and changed a little bit. and uh, I I love it now. I'm going to go back and play my Warlock uh, just because the spec I wanted to play is now viable. Thank you, Blizzard. (laughs) I think Demonology was the most fun spec to Mm -hmm. play, but it was... it just. For me, it wasn't viable to play it leveling up because I just couldn't get the damage out. But I couldn't get, I couldn't get the play. Right. And I think, to be honest, it needed to happen. Demonology, I never ever saw ever. Yeah. It was destruction and maybe a couple of afflictions. But really, if you weren't destruction, you stood out. So, yeah. do you think though that we've now entered a stage where all class specs are viable at end game? I'm honestly starting to see that. I mean, like, with my Death Knight, for example, I could be two-handed, one-handed Frost, viable. I could be unholy, completely viable. I could be a DPS Blood Death Knight and actually still be doing good damage, Um, which is very interesting to try out, by the way. Um, So I think that's really cool. They're making everything kind of equal, except for Shadow Priests. Um, Sorry, guys. You guys are just not doing too well right now. Um... It's early days. They, I mean, they're still. It seems like they're still balancing it out. There's a lot of hot fixes coming in. Yeah, and that, that's the exact point of it being a pre-patch. Um, mm-hmm. And if you has anybody tried to, every single day? Anybody tried PvP in this week? Oh, God no. Uh, there. Um, if you play against a rogue, like if you're doing the skirmishes, for example, which are really fun to try out, just random Q arenas. Um, but if you get in a match against a rogue, you might as well leave before it starts, because you will die. <laughs> <laughs> really? It, it, we'll, we'll talk about that once we get more into our PvP uh, discussion. But yeah, uh, rogues are pretty disgusting right now. I need to level one. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, so I want one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, has anybody had a chance to try, uh, you know, uh, raiding uh, with the group finder? Uh, you know, with the new normal heroic mythic uh, changes, has anyone given it a try? Um, not with the group finder. I went in. Uh, with my guild on Tuesday, um, since they implemented like the flex mm-hmm. rating, you know, the new difficulties and everything, um, I got home from work and I jumped on and I was like, "Hey guys, haven't seen some of you in a while. A lot of us, you know, come back." And they were like, "Come join us." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we did. We only did, I think, like two bosses because I, I got I got in late. They'd already started and. Mm. And some of them needed to head out early. But um, we just did a couple bosses, and, you know, all of us were figuring it out. We wiped yeah. once, I think. Um, you know, the healers are like, wait, no, I still had mana, which <laughs> meant I could have been doing more. Okay, yeah. I think I got this this time. <laughs> and uh, the rest of us are like, wait, what's my rotation? So, I mean, it was, it was fun, though, because yeah. we were all just learning together. And then <laughs> the <laughs> they were like, okay, I know this is going to be ridiculous, but let's post our you know, our DPS mm-hmm. and our, our guild leader is like a solid 2 million above the next person on the <laughs> DPS. Well, is he a We're like rogue or a warrior? He was a fury yeah, warrior. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. He, 
he's always been a warrior and uh i bet he's happy <laughs> and even as a warrior he always beat everyone else out dps before the changes he just yeah. he's just crazy <laughs> <laughs> and he's incredibly well geared compared like yeah. he's so far geared ahead of me and i was pretty much down at the last because most of them were much more geared than i was <laughs> you know well, but um it was just ridiculous yeah. it, it was fun it was good times um you know, one thing I love that got implemented um, that, you know, you don't even notice it. It got implemented so well, the, the stat squish. Like, it just kind of feels like, it just feels okay. You don't really look at it and notice it, but you yeah. look at the DPS meters and like, oh, I'm doing 5K DPS when right. I was doing 150K. <laughs> but, okay. But it, it got implemented so well, you really don't notice it. Mm. Um, so I like that. Uh, but I myself, yeah, since I still don't have a guild, uh, anybody on Alliance Kel'Thuzad, uh, you should look me up. Um, <laughs> I did the the group finder to try that out. And uh, well, as far as the environments that I got into, I wasn't too happy with. It kind of feels like the new LFR. Uh, everybody's just like, we need this many people. We're doing wing four. And I'm just like, there's no wings anymore. It's start from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Normal is flex, but a lot of people in the groups I was getting into just were not understanding the concepts of raiding and a lot of people were just joining and dropping out. So it's kind of a rough environment right now. Uh, I don't know if it's something I'm actually going to do too much in Warlords. I'd rather be in a guild situation instead of having to use the group finder. Yeah. See, and that's really, it, really awesome with the new difficulties mm -hmm. is just getting a guild and, Oh, you're raiding. Can I join? Sure. Yeah. Jump in. It, like, it's no big deal. It, it seems like Group Finder would be great for guilds who, okay, we need to fill a couple spots tonight. Let's just yeah. post up on the Group Finder. As opposed to just trying to start a whole pug off the Group Finder. And especially not having voice communications. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do any raiding this week, Tom? No. Uh, but <laughs> but um, I was around when I, my guild was raiding. And they are... At the moment, not so much interested in the the heirlooms mm -hmm. and things like that. But they, I think they're kind of interested in getting this sort of sense of closure. Mm -hmm. We were working, well, working our way midway through normal uh, Siege of Ogrimmar. So I think we kind of wanted, we're not going to get to the end, but maybe to a good sort of benchmark. Um, I mean, we'd love to see if we could try and hit somewhere like Siegecrafter. That'd be amazing. But I think it's unviable at this stage, especially because we've just got comfortable and then this patch sort of shaking things up but overhearing them in chat and looking into the mumble server and just sort of seeing how it's going on there mm -hmm. i i'm surprised at how well people have been able to get used to these changes um like before this patch got released going back a month or two it got perceived that it was going to be a really jarring exercise uh, and i'm not saying it's not for some people for me in particular i'll be the first to admit i've get quite intimidated when these changes come about and i really don't know anything uh, but saying that i think people shouldn't be scared of going into these sort of guild environments or whether they're going into like you say you know raid finder or dungeon finder or something like that and just accepting that at the moment we're just trying to get used to the system mm -hmm. so i in a way i'm just i'm really pleased with some of the attitudes towards the community and how people aren't just kicking people because they aren't getting the rotation yeah. right first time. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but you know, it's, it's, I think people are much more tolerant at this time. And so if you want to get experimenting or you want to try something you haven't for a while, or you're like me, you want to try a new class that you haven't played for for years, mm -hmm. which is incredibly dangerous. And uh, why it's not? It's a perfect time to do it right now. So. Exactly. <laughs> so I guess that's it. It's the perfect time just to fall around and just stumble through the game. I mean, I'm having the yeah. hardest time actually deciding, okay, what am I leveling first? <laughs> come uh, warlords <laughs> so it's gonna that's be tough. the question uh so moving on um ubers uh this in my opinion is the, the cool part of stuff we can do in the patch um the upper black, black rock spire completely redone for level 90s um except for uh we're missing the last boss which you'll be able to do in uh come release of warlords but uh what do you guys think is it what you expected uh the the dungeon to be uh is this what you're hoping the rest of the dungeons will be like in Warlords? Since none of us have played beta, so we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've enjoyed it. I've had a good time. I've gotten 
one piece of loot from the first boss, but not the nothing from the second two yet. Um, but yeah, I've had fun. Uh, it can be a little tough at times if people aren't like yeah. really well geared. But that's the thing. I mean, I I would ask looking at some of the news that's been coming out of it people have been saying if you if you've raided and you've got some decent gear say you're around the sort of 530s 540s you should be okay but some people are apparently going a bit gung-ho and thinking that they can just pull everything oh, yeah. and i think that that shocked a lot of people this idea that yeah. you can't literally smash through this content <laughs> like you are an end level raider I mean, I have to say, just the pacing of the dungeon, how the the boss fights feel and stuff, uh, killing the bosses, killing the trash, like it, it just feels good. It feels like a good dungeon. It feels balanced. It feels like the right amount of difficulty, even with like having gear, it feels good. And it was great to test out healing in. Um, I, I really hope this is how dungeons feel for the rest of the expansion. I thought the bosses felt really well tuned for five man. Uh, I, maybe it's just me, but I I really enjoyed it. I thought it was well paced. Is there anything you both would like to see changed for when we see a, a full Ubers? I mean, what what would you? Is there any it, <laughs> anything you tweak? To be honest, considering we've only seen half of it, I mean, I imagine if we presume the next half can be very similar, but is there anything you would change? Um. The, the last boss fight that is currently available, there's a lot of stuff that comes in right now. So if you're not, yes. especially as like new healers, not understanding the healing tactic, that's a lot of damage coming in. And uh, yeah. so and I had issues with that fight, too. Uh, and I don't know if it was the, the tank in my group or not, <laughs> because I was getting hit a lot. No, um, I, as a healer. And I was I just was running too. around with ads following me. And I was like, is the tank <laughs> just like not taunting anything i don't know what's going on um that, that must be how you get the leroy achievement or something like that <laughs> <laughs> i i wouldn't change the loot system for some reason i just like you know everybody can go up loot their own stuff if they got it or not i did, i assume it's not going to be that way in warlords but i personally like that i thought it was pretty cool um instead of you know rolling or whatever mm -hmm. what about the sort of lore associated like do you feel there there's a, a decent story told in it in that dungeon uh as far as you know it's a group of black rock orcs that push their way all the way up uh to the mountain led by warlord zayla what's her name mm -hmm. yeah I, I think it's cool i mean it it, it does it because it kind of fits with the content you know and it again keeps that pacing and it's a cool little story changed about the original one I wish there were still whelps that you could go in there and accidentally pull. But, <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's cool. <laughs> because if anything, I, we've, we've obviously talked about the invasion quest, mm -hmm. but Blizzard have seemed very keen to push UBRS as the main yeah. sort of feature of the pre-patch, of anything. So I feel, if anything, they're, if they were to look at the feedback and say, yeah, the invasion quest, that one in Blasted Lands might be a bit, you know... Uh, I don't know how you'd want to explain bland. it, but UB... <laughs> bland. Okay, that's yeah. But UBRS is probably where they're trying to sell the main content of the yeah. the invasion. So that's where if the it managed story is, that's yeah. It's good to know. <laughs> have you done it yet, Tom? No, I've watched it. What, what have you What it. have you done this week, Tom? Come on. I just I just I just played Sims <laughs> effectively. Wow, the Sim, <laughs> Sims edition. Just logging in and just moving stuff about from characters. So it's been micromanaging, but seeing some of the playthroughs um has has been good if anything it's just a cheap way to sort of see the content but i will definitely check it out uh, definitely but at the same time i feel like when we get to the full the full dungeon we've all got to go through this again anyways so and there's nothing in the dungeons themselves that i i need so i'll probably do it once or twice just to yeah. see some of the story and then i probably won't touch it again I, so. I, I really think it is the best way to test out new ways of playing PVE. Because, um, mm. I mean, you can get into a raid, but I don't know. I really like to see it because you really it is judged on everybody's individual performance being a five-man. So everybody has to be pulling their weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's where I really got tested in the new healing abilities. So <laughs> first boss, I was just panicking that I couldn't get anybody above 10% health. And then I realized, oh, wait, that's okay now. <laughs> what are the cues like? Uh, in terms of getting into it, it's about 
at least on the Alliance side, it's about half an hour as a DPS, um, instant queue as a tank, and 10 minutes as a healer, so hasn't really changed for five mans. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I they... haven't played it on the Horde yet. What about you? Hmm. Uh, Jake? What was it like getting in there? Um, It took a while. <laughs> uh, as a DPS, it was, it was a pretty long queue. I was... It was, it's like between 30 to 45 minutes for DPS right now mm. um, on my server, Scenarian Circle. Um, and I haven't tried the queue as a healer or tank, so I'm not sure how it is on that side. <laughs> one, one thing I'd like to go back to class changes here. As a Blood Death Knight, you're pretty much a ranged tank now. You just spend your whole time spamming Death Coil. <laughs> so you're the new mage? Yes, tanking mage. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right, so uh, moving on, uh, we talked a bit about it last week about how uh, you know you go into Firelands with the new patch and you can kill everything. So one of the first things I actually did after you know doing the dungeon and the quest line, I went into Firelands on my Death Knight, and lo and behold, I got through the entire thing in about twenty minutes by myself. That felt really cool. <laughs> I like that. You have the ability to go and do that now. I think it's because of the stat squish. I don't really know, mm -hmm. but man, it, it, it's pretty cool to be able to clear that content pretty quick. And what, did anything major drop for you? Um, yeah, I about halfway completed the transmog set already. Um, nice. Now, Standard. I, I'm going to go through next week and um, actually try and clear it on Heroic. I don't know if I'll be able to do that for myself or not, but I'm actually only missing now one achievement for that uh, meta achievement to get the corrupted purple mount, Firehawk mount thing. So, yeah, I'll be able to get that next week. There has been... Sorry, so actually, have you found it? Have you been in the raids? Um, I haven't gotten any of the old content yet. Uh, I've been planning on it, but I just I haven't had time. I've been working quite a bit. So I was doing the the new stuff first. I just uh, just to throw this out to you two, there's been some discussion on forums and on Twitter that these uh, changes where you can solo all content isn't the best thing for WoW. I mean, a number of people have suggested that if you're able to solo this content, you either shouldn't get any sort of gold from it, or you shouldn't be able to get things like mounts sort of really rare collectible items i mean do you think having a system now where we can literally get all these mounts um and all these transmog sets and you know quite a decent set of gold apparently cata um cataclysm raids are the best for getting gold at the moment oh, do you yeah. think that <laughs> do you think it's do you think it's disruptive at all to the game in any way I don't, because you could really always go and do it anyway. You could always get maybe one or two more people and go do it and then have just as likely a chance to get those mounts or get those, get that amount of gold or whatever. So now it just eliminates having to find, like, hey, friend, do you want to come run this with me? Like, no, you can just do it by yourself now. And I, I, it really doesn't change much from how it was a week ago, really, except for, yeah, you can do it by yourself pretty quickly. Potentially, like as a Blood Death Knight or a Hunter, for instance, you could probably go and solo all those instances before the pre-patch anyway, too. So, Is there a particular set of raids that have been more attractive? I imagine Ice Crown's probably been the main one next to uh, some of the Maelstrom and Kata raids. Yeah, I can see those ones being... Even... I haven't actually gone back and done ICC. It's really just the fact that all the Cataclysm ones are soloable now. That's what I've been enjoying, but yeah, I'm sure those are even easier now too. The problem is though is that the a lot of the, I remember with ICC I always wanted the is it the Blood Bath Vanquish oh, I can't remember yeah. but, you know the um, mm -hmm. the mount for that yeah. um, the a lot of that depends on sort of guild based not guild based achievements sorry uh, group based achievements. Because a lot of the mechanics for the bosses require you to do things in a certain amount of time or to mm -hmm. do a certain thing. Mm -hmm. uh, do you th Is that still possible? Basically, I'm, what I'm trying to ask is those achievement mounts where you need to complete all of them to unlock the mount, can you do that in a soloable environment, do you uh, think? Or do you know? Sorry. 
at least for the Firelands ones, there's a couple, I already have them, but there's a couple of mm -hmm. achievements that still require you to like bounce something between multiple people or stuff like that. So, and like for instance, achievements in Ice Crown Citadel require you to heal that one boss where you have to heal him up uh, to a certain percent. So you need a healer to do that part. So, um, which they did patch in that you can actually completely skip that boss now if you're just playing on a tune that doesn't have any healing ability. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so there are still things that you could need like different classes or mo at least two people to do. So I, I don't think those meta achievements are c still completely solvable if I look at it right. And heroic, uh, heroic stuff like heroic cataclysm raids from what I've seen are still difficult. I almost died a couple times to heroic bosses in Firelands and wasn't able to do uh, Ragnaros, so. But that's just a level 90 as well. I think a lot of people will come to realize once we get to 100 and we've got seven different legendaries and <laughs> sorts, then, then, you know, we'll probably be able to just to go through our own content, Warlord's content, and smash that to pieces on our own. So, I mean, who knows? Who knows? But it's just interesting to think that this oh, I, I just love that this all this old content is just now accessible in my own time I, like you said Tali, just not having to feel i need to group up with someone mm -hmm. to start doing all this stuff i, I love it absolutely love yeah. it and I, mean, I know it makes it sound like sorry <laughs> everybody will complain about something so of course there's going to be the group of people who complain about that but to me personally, it's just something to do when you don't have a group to do something else with. It's like, hey, I'm just going to go run this old raid for transmog gear or try and get him out. Like, it's kind of like more personal progression that you can do on your own. That's it. And I think, if anything, like hearing all these discussions on other podcasts about the, the how WoW is trying to make itself more applicable to people who haven't got a lot of time, mm -hmm. this transition to almost a solo play style a single player wow as it were mm -hmm. it's just so much better it works so much better with my schedule mm -hmm. where i can't log on and meet up with people and sit around for 30 minutes while they try and find a healer <laughs> who has the right eye level score and you just think let's just get in there that's what i want to do and if that's what i want to do bliss has actually listened and said right well you go do that then so do you have I any thoughts it. on it Zul? um i i'm very much with you tarly and it's you know, something fun to be able to go do when when you don't have a group or you're just kind of like, you know, oh, I wonder what I want to do. Well, I'll just go rent some some of this. I don't see a problem with being able to solo old stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, as long as it doesn't get to the point where you're soloing current <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> mm. and, and they've made a lot, like for the people who say, well, this should be for people who played it at current level. Well, they've made a lot of, there's a whole new legacy tab in your achievements, first of all, for achievements that you can no longer get that you have. Um, and there's titles for stuff that you can no longer get. But I think this also appeals to a lot of new players, like people who haven't experienced this content before. It's great now. They don't have to try and find a group to go do it. They can just go do it and still like earn an amount for doing so if they do it week after week and actually put time into doing it so I, yeah exactly no problems there <laughs> and we've all got 250 mounts to get so yeah <laughs> well, yeah we've been on this <laughs> soloing old content for quite a while we can move on now um some more uh, clarification on honor and upcoming pvp changes um if you've been doing a battlegrounds or uh the skirmishes you'll notice that you get like 15 honor for completing anything like come on blizz <laughs> uh but they they are going to change that uh we can pull up the wowhead post right now and read into that a little further mm -hmm. at level 100 skirmishes and battlegrounds will, re will be rewarding strong boxes so that's something that we're not getting right now but you have to take in mind that those strong boxes will get you more honor or potentially gear, depending on how well you personally are performing in this PvP instance. Uh, I, for one, think this is great. Um, because now if you sit there and just sit at the entrance and do nothing at all for your entire battleground, you'll get 18 honor, and congratulations, that's all you get. Um, but those mm -hmm. strong boxes reward you on your personal um, ability not just the fact that you win the battleground, but on how well you perform in the battleground. So those just are not implemented in the game right now, so we're not seeing mm -hmm. that. And But really, if you're trying to grind out honor gear right now, 
yeah, come on, you should have already had it by now. So sorry, it, it's not going to matter in four weeks anyway. <laughs> yeah. Do you think though that just very quickly, um, in the same way, um, Valor Point gear has been is it Valor Point or Justice Point? Justice, Justice Point gear, sorry, um, has been made accessible for gold. Do you think old tier PvP gear should just be made accessible yeah, for gold? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, at least all old tier up to prideful gear which is the current mm -hmm. uh conquest gear uh should be gold i would agree with that yeah hmm and also it goes on to say that obviously the like you say the longer you're in a game and longer the the skirmish mm -hmm. loss the more honor you're going to get so now we're in a system where if you are in a game for an hour and Blizzard's view on this is that if you're putting a personal investment of say an hour or an hour and a half into Alteric Valley, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, if you if you're doing an hour and a half in Alteric Valley, I think something's going wrong now. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> their their argument is you should get rewarded for that because you've obviously taken the time right. to play for that long. So there's a good balance there. I mean, do you guys think this is something that's a bit late to the party, or, or how do you feel about that in general? I would say it's kind of late to the party just because, you know, you can, or at least the past system is you can just show up, troll your whole way through a battleground and get equal rewards as everybody else. So I think this is great. It was something that should have been implemented a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's still not really implemented right now, so I can't really judge on how well the rewards are actually working or not until we get there. I'm also, I believe they're going to be random drop rewards when you're on Ashran as well, so that's cool. From what I understand. Mm -hmm. um, but more PvP, like I was going to mention earlier, like there are so many classes right now that are so broken in PvP, <laughs> like warriors or rogues. <laughs> they have literally been one-shotting people, as well as oh. demonology warlocks. Well, that's fun. <laughs> and, you know, getting in there, you know, I wanted to try out my classes and to see uh, Windwalker Monk just... Ah! <laughs> Can't hurt anybody. <laughs> But that said, uh, playing a Mist Weaver in the skirmishes, it's really cool. I can keep people alive pretty well now. That's fun. I think skirmishes are overall something that have been needed to come back to the game for a long time. Being able to just random queue up for uh, arenas, that's really enjoyable. Because I enjoy arenas a lot. Have you guys tried them at all? I haven't really, I haven't done any PvP. I haven't yet, but saying that, I've got to a stage where I think I'm going to dedicate a character to PvP. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to, if these sort of, like you say, these balances where, not to say I want to go for the character that's obviously overpowered, because I think that's not in the spirit of the game, but <laughs> I, I think I, it's interesting that, you know, obviously certain characters do really, really well. Um, I'm, I'm more of sort of the, the backseat PvPer. I, in Noel Vanilla, I fell in love with this whole sort of, character approach where you could just fear people as a warlock or polymorph people and just yeah. really just mess up like the horde's day um <laughs> oh, i just i really like that i just like that disruptive style of pv it's probably the worst aspects of pvp well they've the actually sort of that are <laughs> they've changed that though i mean everything a lot of things are now on the same diminishing return and there's no more mm. pet cc so the constant cc has stopped and i am so thankful for that whenever i play against a warlock or a shadow priest like ah no more of that <laughs> Taking a comment um, from the article, mm -hmm. though, there's um, I think a guy or girl uh, called It's Deeps, and they quote uh, the, the post from Blizzard, which says, one thing to note is that Blizzard is clearly making strategic decisions regarding PvP, and there's a renewed interest in making it a more active part of the game. And then they go on to say, I read that and instantly had nightmares about the year-and-a-half-long beta that was MOP. I am a PvPer, and I'm getting tired of them trying to get people into it because that just means they're going to change it every other month and get zero results besides annoying other PvPers. So just to carry that, do do we think It's Deeps kind of has a, a point there? This sort of accessibility they're going for as they as a strategic decision to make PvP almost a not a necessary aspect of the game, but just something that almost blends in PV, PvE. Um, do we think that's going to disrupt what PvP is, effectively? Is it going to just change everything? Tali. Uh, yes. Um, I'll just choose you. Okay. Um, 
I think it will change everything. But I think it's finally... Because as a PvPer, I completely agree uh, that Miss of Pandaria was so... Like a beta, almost, for PvPers. They just changed things so much. Um, but I think Warlords is finally taking that step in the right direction by adding in skirmishes. You know, it's pretty much mm. practice mode for arenas. And Ashram is such a different thing, but it sounds so awesome. And then the, you know, the the boxes, the, you know, the PvP rewards... I think it's a step in the right direction, but I really do agree. I would like to not see them changing it so much back and forth, back and forth, just to try and make it more accessible. Because PvP has always been hard, something hard to get into. You shouldn't necessarily try and make it more accommodating for pe for people who are new to it. it. It is something that you have to learn and get used to, so it shouldn't necessarily be made more easy. But at the same time, those skirmishes and Ashran are ways to ease yourself into it without affecting the hardcore players. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about it, Zul? Um, I, I mean, like I've said, I don't really PvP much. I haven't, but there are things coming up that are interesting me. I mean, Ashran, um, the strong boxes as a way to get loot mm -hmm. uh, from PvP. I really like that idea. Um, and so there, there are a few things coming up that might get me to at least try it out, give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Who knows if I'll, if I'll stay with it, but it'll be something that I really start doing with any regularity. But to me, um, the changes coming seem to be good ones. That's it. I think it's, a, it, it's almost an atmosphere from P, not, not in a bad way. I think they have a point, sort of having this view. But I think PvP is look at PVE is and just see us all coming along, going make room, we're coming in, and <laughs> yeah. they yeah. they panic and they think we're all going to sit there and start complaining, yeah. like oh, um, I, I don't get all this, um, <laughs> you know, all this, all, all these PvP specific stats. Um, Blizzard, get rid of them. They don't make fun anymore. Or you know, why is my PVE gear not the best in the game at PvP? And <laughs> I, I can I can see what they're scared about because the, the I think the two things, the two aspects of wow, well, I need to stay different. Mm -hmm. But everywhere I look, I see this blend gonna happen. And not to bring the point over because we talked about it in the past, but the way like they're making battlegrounds more accessible from lower levels, they almost appear like zone. Um, progression yeah like you every 10 levels you go you get a new battleground mm -hmm. so i just feel like there's going to be a point where in blizzard's view the ideal player would be someone who does a bit of questing and then goes you know what actually i'm gonna do the next two or three levels um battlegrounding it and and you just kind of jump between the two you have multiple ladders you jump between mm -hmm. and i think things like ashram will be rolled out um just to sort of interim periods at end game so I, I think there's a struggle. There's a struggle between the traditional boundaries. And I, I think that's, that says a lot. You know, it is a traditional boundary um, uh, and one that... Go ahead, sorry. Well, I, I think they just need to clearly define, you know, like this is this content is here for the, the new people to PvP or for the casual PvP. And then they, they have, need to have a, quite a distinction between that and then all right this is for you hardcore players like here's your rated battlegrounds here's your arenas and I, we haven't really seen anything new for hardcore pvpers either and that's why uh, people are a bit concerned uh, is ashran for the the hardcore or for the the new people <laughs> it's kind of a interesting place where hardcore pvpers sit and i think to round it off i won't i won't say any more on this but it's there's a particular thing going on at the moment where I think those PvP specific stats are no longer displaying on your character stats. Mm -hmm. And some people sort of spoke up about that and said, what's going on? And the reason is because they're not going to be displayed going ahead. When yeah. you get to lower hundreds, you won't have those specific stats. So I think there's a fear that PvP is kind of being dumbed down to a PvE understanding. Yeah. <laughs> we'll so... only know when we get there. <laughs> yes arcane explosion everything yeah and, and that's what people need to take in mind like with their panicking about their class changes right now it, it's really not necessarily balanced for level 90s right now <laughs> um especially pvp uh it'll feel a lot better once we're all level 100 so anyway and all get destroyed by fury wars <laughs> yes <laughs> moving on <laughs> Um, something wicked this way comes. Yes, Hollow's End is here, starting today, actually. Or yesterday, or today, yesterday? Half an hour ago. Half an hour ago. 
Uh, <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> Hollow's End is here. Uh, you know, the typical everybody goes out trick-or-treating and gets their masks and puts out fires that r ridiculously keep starting themselves on the buildings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's a terrifying fire. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, is anybody going to, get, going to get the Headless Horseman mount this year? Does anybody here have it? First of all, is anybody fortunate? Nope. No. <laughs> so like me, I everybody I assume will be playing that dungeon on every single one of their tunes, trying to get them out, like they do every year. <laughs> I worry that this is going to be the main content going into Warlords. This is the big, big Hollow's thing. End. No, the, the end. big thing is the anniversary. <laughs> that, that, that's the big cunt. <laughs> well, that's after. <laughs> Only by a couple of days. <laughs> don't worry about don't worry about Grom and all that. It's about the headless horseman. He's back. Yeah. Oh, and Ragnaros again. <laughs> oh yeah, and that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, every single year I run through this dungeon on every tune that can, and I never get the damn mount. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe this year will be my year. Who knows? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But saying that, there's also some other specific things. Is, do they still do the um, the helm, yes. the headless horseman helm? Yes, That's and it's what yeah. five twenty or five forty. Uh, yeah, they upgraded the uh, gear that you can get to all I level five forty. That's that's uh, normal mode gear, so that's yeah. pretty cool. So like I saw that and I was like, I guess I'm definitely going to be doing this because <laughs> I could use some upgraded gear. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, other big news that came out this week. Um, WoW is up to 7.4 million subscribers again. Yeah. Woo. Woo. That, that is up, up over from, seven. from 6.8, which we saw last quarter. So I wonder if this has anything to do with an expansion that's right around the corner, maybe? The, the pre-patch <laughs> pre and getting ready and the expansion and BlizzCon. And... <laughs> is anybody surprised by this? I mean, I think we all kind of knew this would happen once we got closer to the expansion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is there anything else that can contribute to it? I mean, I really don't think so. I think it really is the expansion. <laughs> well, actually, it might also be maybe people kind of... I mean, this is for what time period is this for? The, like, what quarter is this? Uh, quarter three. Cool. So what yes, month but is it is an food? early... It is an early announcement. Blizzard did this. Oh. Their, their announcement's due still to come up, So, but they, they shot early and said, by the way, at this stage... Yeah. Where it's okay. So quarter three so still it... isn't over yet, but no. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, this could also be, you know, maybe people unsubscribed over the summer. Yeah, and now they're coming back. Everybody's back in college or high school or middle school, uh, whatever the play. Range summer is. tends to be a slow time. People unsubscribe then. Mm -hmm. So part of it could just be normal people coming back, but yeah. I'm sure a large part of it is the expansion. Do you think Warlords could push us over eight million again? I think we could see it. I don't think much more than that, but <laughs> let's get to 15 million. Come on, right? everybody! <laughs> no, we got to compete with Hearthstone. They're at like 20 million now. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Blizzard, your tiny little game is doing better than your big MMO. <laughs> but I'm sure Warcraft is still making more money for them oh, yeah. since Hearthstone is free. Oh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> it's free dollars. So our discussion topic this week, if everyone's ready to move on to that. Mm -hmm. um, is actually we finally have a viewer question. Woo! Thank you, May Rothville. My Rothville. And Me Rothville. Me Rothville. We'll go ahead and read through this question here. <clears throat> Should I read it in some kind of accent? <laughs> if you can do an I'll, accent, you know, I'll just I'll just pretend I'm over from the UK with uh, Tom. All right, here we go. Uh, hi guys. You sound South African. South Africa. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I can't distinguish. Uh, I'm just going to read it like this. All right, here we go. <laughs> hi guys. I'm sitting here listening to episode 14 and decided to finally write in to the show. You are discussing gold and importance of the upcoming expansion and how garrisons will play a big part in that. And I just have to say that the idea scares me. I'm already not a fan of garrisons, and if the gear in Warlord is going to center around gold earning and garrisons are going to be a major part of that, then I'm going to be forced into utilizing my, utilizing my garrison more and more, and the one thing I want to do with is ignore it. If I could possibly make it through the entire expansion, spend as minimal time in there as I possibly could, I would be happy. I understand that a lot of people are excited for garrisons and already can't get enough of them. I'm just one of those people who 
and I fear that this feature may be killing my sense of enjoyment for Warcraft, and I hate to even think, but I can't help but do so. I'm hearing people talk of needing around 50k gold come launch, and right now I have utmost 30k total spread amongst all my characters, and that is the most that I have ever had when I started the game. Am I just going to be stuck at a disadvantage when it comes to getting gear and warlords because I don't have high gold income? Am I going to be forced to play parts of the game that I don't find enjoyable and actually make me not want to even log in just so I can have a chance at getting to the stuff that I do enjoy and want to do? Good question. Very long written question, but good. If we had a navy, you'd be getting invaded so badly right now. <laughs> was that just a horrible accent? That, that Actually, that was good. That's better than my accent. That was my. That was better than my accent, to be honest. And I live here. <laughs> uh, okay, wasn't making fun. I just wanted to read it in a different voice than my own. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it was good. It was good. No, it's it's better than bringing this voice back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could have read it that whole it. way. So. <laughs> That would have been exciting. But back to the question at hand here. Um, are you going to be forced to do all this stuff if you don't want to? Absolutely not. You do not have to do your garrison if you don't want to. Yes, it's integrated into the quest line. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. sure, you have to do it for the quest line. But as far as having it be mandatory for raiding, absolutely not. The, the gear that you get from there that is good from raiding is actually you get it over time. You takes maybe three or four weeks of doing the garrison to get one piece of gear so when you think about it it's not actually a good way to get gear if you're trying to get gear quickly it that's meant for people who are on a casual basis and just want to get gear over time so no no you're you're it is not mandatory yes there are cool buffs from it there's a lot of cool things you can get from it but your garrison is absolutely not mandatory for warlords of draenor yeah and as far as like he talks about it being like the main way to make gold well the best ways to make gold have always been side things you have to sink time into mm -hmm. professions you know stuff like that uh collecting you know rare pets and selling those in the auction house mm -hmm. those have always been the best way to make gold and those have always required quite a bit of time outside of the main either raiding or doing pvp so we won't disagree with you there saying that yes the garrison is going to be your best source of income. But it's just like every other good source has always been. It's going to be something that requires time outside of the main activities. Mm -hmm. And it's just always been like that. The people that have a ton of gold are the ones that spend a lot of time playing the auction house or crafting stuff they can sell or getting rare pets you know, that they can sell and mounts and everything like that. That's where gold comes from. I've always been horribly poor because I don't do any of that <laughs> side stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, Tom? What do you think? I have to agree. I, firstly, I will say I, I'm going to say Morothville because I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. But um, firstly, 30k gold. I wish I had 30k gold. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. I am, yeah. I am the peasant of WoW. Um, I think I've got about 9k across yeah. my characters on my main server. But will run Firelands. I'll get a lot of gold. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So now start stocking up. But in terms of what he started off by saying, um, if, if you could make it through the entire expansion and spend as little time in the garrison as possible, you'd be happy. I I see what he's getting at in mm -hmm. a sense, and I, I kind of understand his his all you know enjoyment, their enjoyment about the game mm -hmm. as it was. Unfortunately, I'm of the perspective where I think garrisons is a good departure. It's something you can dip into. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what it's aimed at. I mean, it's been sold as a major feature. I think when push comes to shove, it will be. We're not all going to be hanging around in our garrisons when right. we're on standby mode. So it's not as big. It's not as big a thing in the whole context of the expansion. So I think honestly, if you don't want to build a garrison, just just do what you need to do with it, and then just stay outside of it. Just never go back there unless you there's something you need. I mean, I think you could certainly have that approach to gaming. Mm -hmm. In terms of gold income, I mean, unless unless old tier raids are still a viable force a viable form of gold collecting once warlords drops once we get to a level 100 then unfortunately it's probably going to be one of the main features and blizzard may plug it as that they might specifically build the game in a way to make 
garrison's the only way to get gold and like you say those upgrades and that over time gear but i don't think it's anything to say you can't play without it no one's going to sit here and kick you out of guild because your garrisons aren't built in a certain way and no one's going to no one's going to look at your character online and realize you haven't really done anything in a garrison it's not going to take anything away is what i'm trying to say and if you want to play without it i don't see a reason why you can't and if you're worried and i think this is the crux of the question if you're worried that not having a garrison wouldn't make you competitive i wouldn't worry because as Mm. someone who has never ever ever I listen to so many podcasts and I, all I hear is, you know, people like Pat Crane saying, oh, I've got 15K gold. I've never, ever had 15K gold. He <laughs> thinks 15K gold is poor. I would be a very, very, very happy man to have 15K. <laughs> but I've never, ever suffered because of it. Yeah. So if I if I can get through on a peasant's wage, then <laughs> I think you can live without garrisons and I don't think you'll suffer because of it at all. And good, you know, good luck to you. Do the, Play the game you want to play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything you've done previously to make gold is always going to be a viable option now. It, it, it's more just adding a whole new feature for you, and you absolutely don't have to do it. But thank you so much for sending in a question. That was a great, yeah. great question. I mean, yeah. we had all had plenty to say about it. So thank you. Yeah. And, and I'd say one last thing on that. Yeah. Um, I'd recommend going and listening to uh, the last episode of Convert to Raid mm-hmm. when they had... Um, Brian Hillinger like, and Ian has posted. Yes, yes. yeah, yes. on the show because they specifically talk about garrisons and how people are worried they'll have to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, um, that they that have exactly. some good stuff to say. Yeah, but we said it better. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like they would know more about the game and how it works or what's planned. Well, they listen to our show and they do things in response to us. So you heard it first here. <laughs> All right. So moving on to our other segment of the show, uh, the Prince's Gaze. Uh, where we take a look at the community in the world of Warcraft. Uh, if you check other sites to view what you should be doing for your class, you look up class guides, you look up how you how you should be gearing, what gems, stuff like that you need, Icy Veins and Wowhead have both updated their website to provide you specific class guides for how your class can work right now in the pre-patch for level 90, as well as how you should be gearing in level 100. So if you check out icy-veins.com slash class slash wow slash class guides you can get all the information there as well as wowhead.com slash classes you can get all the different information you that you need from your class there uh yeah. great stuff I use they got that updated. all the time yep they got that updated very quickly i was very happy to see that yeah um admittedly i think they're they're in the transition phase of getting the level 100 stuff sorted right. but if uh, where yeah. we are now you, for now you it's can't for... beat it 90 mm-hmm. level 90 mm-hmm. and it'll it, they always update really fast like a patch hits yep. and the next day it's updated like based on the new changes and stuff also uh not mentioned on this list here on our notes but uh, ask mr robot dot com has also been yes. updated and i have been using that for as man as long as it's been popular i've been using uh, ask mr robot because you can look up your character hit uh, optimize your gear and it tells you exactly what to reforge exactly well there's no more reforge which we but... don't need to do anymore <laughs> thank you yes. um but exactly tell you what about gems, gems and enchants and that you need and what it'll look in your bags and tell you hey you actually have a better piece of gear in your bags than what you're wearing yeah and so that i think the the best in bag you need to have a subscription right um, um it's free yes. for like the next i don't know i forget they but with the new patch mm-hmm. Um, the best in bag is free for everyone for a short time, and then it's going to go back to needing right. the subscription for it. But the basic character optimization utility is, that free. is completely free, yeah. and they even have an in-game add-on. So you can mm-hmm. import that optimization, and it can automatically It'll... put out a shopping list for your... Exactly. <laughs> for um, your... And another cool thing with... I mean, obviously it optimizes based off you know what's usually considered the best for different classes and stuff. But if you're a little more into theory crafting and you like sort of setting up your own thing, mm-hmm. you can go in and adjust stat weights based on what you want, mm-hmm. and then it'll optimize for you based on your own custom stat weights. Yep, so you don't even have to go with exactly what it tells you because sometimes you're smarter than the robot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One thing as well, just to add in, at present, there's a bit of a weird moment where there's a, you have tanks, for example, with Thunder Fury, and they're tanking really well with that. There's some very old raid tier yeah. items that are actually quite good for this current content. <laughs> and so you might find actually that something like Ask Mr. Robot 
tells you that the stuff you have from old tiers is actually probably the best in slot mm-hmm. for your current spec and all that. And also, as a great little idea, if you see like a world class raider or you see the top end players or maybe even your guildmates who play a class and play it quite well, feel free to look them up on Ask Mr. Rowe. I think you can yep. look them mm-hmm. up and you can see how they're built and what what sort of structure they're having. So it's great to sort of just learn from other people as well. But just to very quickly throw it out, what other resources do you guys use, whether they're sort of class specific or otherwise? Honestly, uh, we've mentioned them. I've used Icy Veins and Ask Mr. Robot for as long as I can remember. Actually, I also use the community site Noxic. Uh, and I was just going to bring that up. IC.com. Um, they also have great uh, rotation guides and, uh, you know, how to. Uh, yeah, their guides. guides tend to be a little bit simpler than Icy Veins. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a little bit easier to follow right off the bat, mm-hmm. but Icy Veins does get more in depth if you're looking to really like yeah. optimize at that top level. Mm-hmm. Then I'd suggest Icy Veins. But um, when I learn a new class, I tend to go to Noxic first to get the hang of it, and then once I'm really getting used to it, I go to Icy Veins. Plus, uh, Noxic, I mean, also has guides for Diablo three. So if you're wanting to level up a class in that game mm-hmm. as well, don't know anything about it, Noxic has guides for that too. Um, what about you, Tom? I well, I I didn't have anything else other than those. So if anything, I I, I was asking you guys a genuine <laughs> question. I wanted to know what else yeah. there was. Um, but just trying to think. I mean, you've got um, just trying to think things like Wow Insider, mm-hmm. Joystick. They um have good links to um sort of content guides so whether it's professions they've got a great profession guide out at the moment how they're going to change for warlords the class guides they've discussed and things like that so i mean generally you, the sort of stuff where you type in wow guide into google yeah. have a look at that obviously but um yeah no it's uh, it's great that they've managed to catch up so quickly though <laughs> so do we have uh to our last segment the hero's call do we have any shout outs that we would like to give out this week um yeah, I'm going to do one that's also a bit of Prince's Gaze mm-hmm. um, and Hero's Call, both. Uh, the guild I am in on Scenarian Circle, the Wayfarer's Coterie, mm-hmm. um, they're an awesome guild, super cool. They are one of the main reasons that I finally stuck with WoW after years of leaving and coming back and leaving and coming back. Um, they helped me get into raiding when I'd never done it before. It helped me learn, you know, encouraged me to try healing or tanking or DPS, whatever I wanted to do, and they would help me, you know, figure it out. Um, they're really just fun and funny as well. It is on an RP realm, and they are an RP guild. Uh, guild chat itself is out of character, but there's a separate channel they created for <laughs> RP stuff. Um, but they are recruiting. So for um, raiding... Uh, you know, when Warlords comes out, they're looking to, to build up the raid team a little bit because they've been doing 10-man, and now that it's flexible, they're willing to take in some more people. Um, so if you go to the official, just the WoW forums, go to the uh, Scenarian Circle server forums, um, you can find them on there, Wayfarer's Cord- Coterie. You can find both the recruitment thread, which is just the name of the guild, um, and it actually starts with a really long RP post from our guild leader, you know, about looking for people and all that kind of stuff. And then usually on the first page, you can also find another thread from our guild that is kind of our goof around slash RP thread. It'll go back and forth from like actual role playing characters to just really weird, crazy stuff. There was once, of, once like two or three pages <laughs> where everyone in the guild was on there role-playing as cats <laughs> in our quote-unquote guild clubhouse. Meow. Jumping on the fridge, running under couches. <laughs> yeah, and then and then it goes back into, like, serious role-play, like, just <laughs> without skipping a beat. So, <laughs> so if you fun. are looking for a guild, um, Horde side, Scenario, and Circle to do some raiding with, uh, look them up. Cool. Uh, my personal shout out would really just be to my the guy I can't pronounce his name, Maya Rothville. Thank you again just for sending. I in think a it's question. Zach on Twitter. Zach, thank you for sending in a question. Um, it is Zach much on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> much appreciated. I will just give a quick shout out um, to Imanis on Twitter, who's at Palimanis. 
and Poikul Satin, we've spoke about in the past. Um, thanks for sort of uh, responding to our suggestion that Weird Al Yankovic should be BlizzCon's uh, music act. I am uh, so with that. <laughs> no, I, I think anything else is just going to be a disappointment now. Yeah. We've built that up too much in our heads. And um, very quickly to Jim uh, Norav. Um, I think that's Jim slash or Norav. So um, big thanks to um, all of those for getting sort of shouting out to the show and things like that. It's yeah. been great. And yeah, I, I, it, please do keep your viewer questions coming in. Yes, absolutely. Because we will love to hear them. And you'll definitely want to keep tuning in the show, especially as we get closer and closer to BlizzCon. We've got some stuff planned up uh, for what we're going to be doing at BlizzCon. Uh, so you definitely want to keep it locked to our show. We're going to be... Well, I'm going to be there, and everybody else is going to be watching, and we're going to be talking. And, and just leading up to it, uh, the week before BlizzCon, we're going to have a pretty big uh, show about what we think is going to happen. And I'll be bouncing in my chair because I'll be so excited. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, like, see, your suitcase is already ready to go in the back. And... <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's already there. He's already outside the convention with his iPad. <laughs> you like, you realize this is days away still. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Um, Mike Warhai just tells him to go away <laughs> well the blizzard won't even be in anaheim yet they'll still be up in uh wherever they are in california <laughs> but anyway you can always catch our show on itunes stitcher youtube and twitch tv um and you can always uh, catch us on twitter at geeks of azeroth uh, you can find me personally at tarly underscore pause uh, where can we find everybody else zool at zool geek and tom at TC McCurro, but that is going to change literally after this show. So good luck finding me. <laughs> <laughs> He's so trying high. to be elusive. <laughs> I'm going to disappear. Go off radar. And of course, those viewer questions can be sent to us through Twitter or at Geeks of Azeroth, EG at gmail.com. And if you like this type of content and you want to see more of it, you can see our other podcasts and Let's Plays, reviews, other such content at epicgeeks.co.uk got plenty of stuff for you to check out over there but otherwise we'll be back for the same time next week same place same locations same different time zones that we are always in and confusing each other with we'll see you next week everybody have a great week in azeroth